two, one. Uh, hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is June 15th, and this is the uh, EU-US uh, uh, session. Uh, today we have myself, Mark Waite, and Bruno Verachten. Welcome. And uh, just as an aside, thanks to everyone who's uh, helped out with any documentation uh, Jenkins wise since I've been out for the last month. It's much appreciated. And um, yeah, just makes me feel great about being part of this community. So thanks. Uh, today on the agenda, we have uh, some notes about Google Summer of Code and where it's at. Uh, a couple, there were some errors in the uh, previous change log that have been caught. Uh, just an update on the next change log in LTS uh, 2.401.2. Uh, there was a pull request submitted recently um, from James Chen that uh, needs a review. Uh, Meg has said she'll be, she's willing to review. I'm back so I can review as well. Uh, end of life notifications are now present in Jenkins core and, or and uh, will be as part of the LTS release next week. Uh, container controller end of life going alongside that uh, container agents end of life uh, whether uh, or not the operating systems that are tested uh, should be documented for Jenkins release which uh, with the new version of documentation can be possible uh, and the main newsletter uh, has been submitted as a draft uh, just needs to be reviewed and um, approved uh, anything else that we want to put on the docs office hours agenda today, or does that seem like it covers uh, everything that anyone had on mind? Um, I think I have a blog post to be reviewed too. Um, yes. What is it about? Oh yes, uh, <laughs> removing uh, outdated plugins uh, when using a Docker container. Um, and I have a PR, which is still, I guess, in draft, uh, regarding the use of update CLI in order to keep the documentation up to date um, regarding the examples. Okay. Um, do you know what I can actually? Um, oh, do you know what you the... to, I... Yeah, I'll give you the link. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I can just start in here too as well, Bruno. So no problem there. Thank you. Uh, and yeah. Okay. okay. And I got the link for that. Let me just put that in there. Okay. Uh, anything else that needs to be added to the agenda? Okay. Uh, all right. So then uh, we'll get started here. So first off, uh, Google Summer of Code is in progress. Uh, we've seen some work being done on the projects. Thank you to the contributors and participants. Um, for the Docker Quick Start project, uh, we're not at a draft pull request yet, but uh, should be there. Just needs a little bit more push. So um, that'll be addressed. Uh, the building Jenkins.io with alternative tools has been making good progress. Uh, Van Diet has shared a Google Doc here uh, that shows uh, previews for what the current and updated version look like. Everything looks really great here. Um, it's really nicely presented. Uh, there are questions and concerns about stuff such as accessibility for something like this, where the backgrounds changing color uh, may or may not be an issue. We, that's something that needs to be uh, considered and addressed or um, just at least discussed. Uh, and then various things like the admonitions changing to be more of a highlight than uh, kind of an offset. So uh, some really great stuff here. Uh, I think there's a lot of good uh, visual updates for the for the site itself and the UI. So that looks wonderful. Um, and some of the things that have come up and that we've been that have been getting worked through. Um, so there have been suggestions made as this uh, is being prepped. So big thanks to Gavin Mogan for uh, getting that first implementation of the preview sites put together. Um, there are a couple, uh, yeah, so the question, so like accessibility for the light blue background, um, navigation is going to be sticky on the left. Is it going to be sticky on the right? Is that something that we uh, should do? Does it, how does it work on other, you know, Infora sites? 
Uh, so lots of work still to be done, but lots of progress and lots of great uh, topics are coming up as a result of the progress being made there. Um, thanks to everyone for their work on the alternative uh, Jenkins.io build options. Really exciting. Um, Mark and or Bruno, anything else on Google Summer of Code before we move on to the next topic? Nothing else from me. Okay. No, fine with me. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, for the next topic, uh, Mark, I'm just going to ask you real quickly is uh, I, I, re I know we talked about these errors that were caught. Um, have these already been fixed and resolved or is this going to be something or this, uh, these changes, have they been fixed already? Uh, they have not been fixed. I was just doing it in parallel while you were going through the meeting now. <laughs> Oh, okay, perfect. So those will be done. So, so I was just deleting my debris that I inadvertently left and we're working through it. Okay, great. So that'll, that'll be done. Uh, the 2.401.2 change log and upgrade guide has been created. I've uh, added the pull request here in that link um, and also submitted it to the issue for the release. Uh, this um, this change log is different than normal. Uh, thanks to the success of the previous release, we haven't had any issues or anything that really constitutes a proper backport. So um, right now, 130 half people are very happy with everything. So uh, this upcoming change log is going to include the fact that we now have the end of life system notifications available as part of the LTS. Um, so that's going to be a major enhancement that's included in the change log. Uh, and there is already, uh, Mark's already created a blog post that announced and uh, displays what that looks like and also shares some of the end of life that are we are expecting and are, that are going to be coming up. Um, so I've made sure to include that uh, as one of the references here. So uh, that this will be really nice and clear and go a long way in showcasing uh, how much work has been done with that and how uh, that went from a suggestion just a couple of months ago to being implemented now, which is great. Um, and uh, of course, since uh, the change log and uh, free guide are available for review, feedback, et cetera, always happy to hear anything, um, by all means, feel free to uh, take a look. Uh, so uh, there was also a, a new pull, a pull request submitted recently. Uh, this isn't necessarily new uh, as it has been a few weeks now, but um, several suggestions to update the UI and just changes to things like font text um, still needs a lot of review and some work done on it. Um, as we said, Meg McRoberts has been reviewing and working on it and providing suggestions uh, now that I'm back and available, I will be able to review and provide feedback as well. Um, there looks to be some merge conflicts, so things that will need to be addressed. Uh, and yeah, everything looks pretty solid here. It looks like um, the user, the contributor is very responsive and working uh, alongside and responding to Meg. So uh, that's a very good sign, at least. Yeah. Um, the, so Kevin there, the complication yeah. on that one is the content that's been provided in a number of cases is already already exists elsewhere on the site and so we don't want to duplicate it um, got it the that's that's one of the challenges of bringing content from the wiki into mm -hmm. the wiki that has not been maintained modified or updated in many years into the currently active jenkins io site because because there are many times when that material already ha has a better home somewhere else and the challenge for this kind of pull request is finding those better homes and putting the content in those better homes. So it's it's not that Jeffrey's work is not appreciated, it's very much appreciated, but rather it requires a lot more work than probably Jeffrey's ready to do. And so someone who really understands the site and how it's laid out can recommend this piece goes here, this piece should be deleted, et cetera. This piece should be rephrased. So your review and Meg's review are both very valuable. Great. Thanks for um, just clarifying that a bit more, Mark. I really appreciate that. 
uh, I definitely can see where that would be a difficult task for someone to take on if they're not as familiar with one versus the other or um, just kind of coming from one to the other. There's a lot of places where that information can go, like you said. Um, you know, I, I've been working in the Jenkins documentation since I started with CloudBees a year ago. And yeah, there's a there's a good chance that there's information somewhere that we can go back and forth and get to. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy and really, ha really excited to take a look at that and see what we can figure out in terms of the content there. All right. All right. Uh, so moving on to the next one, and uh, actually, before you, just thank you, Bruno, for also uh, reviewing and sharing feedback there. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, something that we've announced previously, uh, but just want to share again, uh, the end of life notifications are available in Jenkins core. Uh, so that was in weekly 2.407. Um, and it will be part of uh, the next LTS, which is 2.401.2. So uh, you can expect to see these these sort of notifications appear in your Jenkins instance. And uh, the idea is that it will be a warning of six, within six months of its end of life date. Um, we've also announced some of the different OS end of life that are going to happen for Jenkins and what alternatives and uh, changes you can make ahead of time to make sure that uh, you're, this isn't uh, catching off guard or that you have to even worry about it in the first place. Um, so. CentOS 7 is something that we've been discussing, uh, increasing, uh, or sorry, not increasing, but uh, bringing to end of life sooner than later. So this is our opportunity to say, hey, that we, we got what we wanted. Um, this side of life notification helps facilitate that uh, and just lets people know where they're at. Um, and th this is just fantastic. This is something that, again, we discussed, started talking about a couple months ago, already implemented, and will be able to provide users with even more information, insight, and uh, frankly, control over their Jenkins instance that um, just that it makes everything a lot easier. Yeah, well done, Mark. Uh, Kevin, do we have um, a look sometimes at the Jenkins IO uh, website statistics? Do we know if there has been a peak recently uh, on the blog post of Mark blog post? I don't know because I don't see any information on community Jenkins IO about, uh, you know, detecting uh, the fact that you're running an outdated OS. So I don't know if people are reading the article say, oh, crap. <laughs> to move to something else and everything is crystal clear so there is no need for any question or i don't know yeah so um, i've i've not looked at the i've not looked at the the statistics for the the, the web page so i haven't worried about it i wasn't yep. i wasn't overly concerned if only because it hasn't reached LTS yet. And, and there are no. a significant portion of the users that are running on LTS. So I expect more noise in two or three weeks. Got it, thank you. And the tragedy is, the, the sad part is that there are many times when users just ignore our administrative monitors. <laughs> it's our best <laughs> attempt to inform them, but if they ignore them, we, we, we're, we've made our best effort to tell them. Maybe we should do like the people spreading viruses or something, you know, all your data is belong to us to something like that. If you don't upgrade your operating system, beware. No, we can't do that, of course. I don't think scary skull and crossbones are going to win anyone over. <laughs> probably effective, but uh, yeah, not in the way we wanted to probably. Cool. All right. Well, uh, yeah. And thank you, Mark, for uh, getting all that kind of sorted and taken care of, implemented. That's really fantastic. Uh, and yeah, alongside that, again, um, CentOS 7 are already is already being displayed as uh, approaching end of life. So uh, the monitor should be working and just and sharing that information. Uh, and that means the CentOS 7 end of life is approaching sooner. We've uh, gotten through the discussion and points that we had been talking about uh, the last few months and we're, we're where we want to be. Uh, the container agents end of life, um, this is going to be a little bit more involved and will require more work than uh, just the controller. 
So uh, just some examples of what that might look like or what that's gonna entail from stuff like Arch Linux, uh, the versions node monitor plugin and the platform labeler. So, yeah. um, it's, 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 sorry for interrupting, but uh, yeah. in the last platform SIG meeting, uh, Damien shared with us um, Excel sheet of some sort with all the data from um, uh, Docker Hub so we can make uh, wise decisions because we have the numbers uh, now we know what kind of image are totally ignored and what are pretty which one are pretty profitable so that's kind of cool and sorry i don't have the link with me right now <laughs> but it's a public uh sheet Right. That well, that's good. To, that's awesome, Bruno. Thank you for sharing. And like, yeah, we can. I can find that and put that link in here after the fact if it's in the platform sig meeting uh, notes. So, yeah. Um, Mark, anything else on that stuff uh, to mention or bring up? No, uh, more work to be done, but uh, a good beginning, and the beginning is valuable enough as it is. Great. Thank you. Um, something that came up with the versions documentation pages is um, should we be documenting the testing the operating system being used for testing the Jenkins releases. Um, so it's not necessarily uh, as easy to document with the current setup of the documentation in Jenkins.io. Uh, however, having the version documentation available and that functionality uh, would allow us to switch documentation depending on the operating system itself. And therefore, uh, testing can reflect that specifically as opposed to a more general sense of it. Uh, and this would just give users the uh, confidence in what they're doing is safe and secure and has been vetted by our team. Uh, and we can even uh, include further versions like the Java versions. Uh, we already have a lot of testing in place, but uh, if that could be even expanded or just uh, put out there and documented clearly for everyone, uh, that much better for the user experience, that much better for uh, upgrading Jenkins, going on to the next release, the next version, the next LTS, whatever it might be, if you're a weekly user. Uh, so that just gives that much more confidence to that to the user base. Uh, next, so uh, again, the main newsletter was submitted yesterday, so I'll be reviewing that today. Uh, and hopefully we can get that published before the end of the week. Uh, Bruno has also submitted another blog about removing outdated plugins while using Docker. So that'll, that also needs another review. Uh, and then the, as Bruno was saying at the beginning, uh, there's a draft PR regarding the use of update CI, CLI. So uh, again, something I'm gonna go through and review and provide some feedback on. Yeah, thank you. The thing is, we already are using Renovabot, I think. So as Binek asked, why would you use Update CLI instead of Renovabot? And the only valid answer I got is that I know just a little bit more about Update CLI than I know about Renovabot. I don't know Renovabot at all, but I'm a newcomer with um, Update CLI. So that's why any kind of works for what I propose. Kind of, because there are still some bugs. Uh, which all link to the way, for example, Ruby uh, proposes, creates its release on GitHub or the way that Update CLI treats what is perceived as a release on GitHub by Ruby, whatever. So it's not a PR that I hope to be merged quite um, fast, but it's a discussion, an ongoing discussion, and maybe one day we'll see it merge, but no rush. Thanks for the thanks for the background, Bruno. I appreciate it, and I I think it's great if it's a it's a it's a bit of a good discussion we're having. The community's engaging. There's good back and forth, and we're getting things from it. I think it's you know more than okay to just leave these things open without merging them. Have that discussion. Make sure that everyone is heard. So uh, yeah, good, great to know. Thank you very very Thank much. Okay, that covers everything that I had on the agenda today. Is there anything anyone else uh, wanted to add, share, make well, sure we talk about? 
so could you could you in the errors in 2.401.1 change log open up the hyperlink and let's have you approve it uh, no, not that one. one that one exactly yeah. right okay it's a removal okay. of three and i confirm that all three of them are mentioned in preceding change logs because we use that pull mm -hmm. data value I could see, oh, this one was already mentioned. If it's already mentioned, it doesn't need to be mentioned. It's not correct to mention it a second time. Right, right. Okay, great. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. And it's already enabled, so. And great. Fantastic. Okay, then. Uh, so that takes care of everything to, for today, then. I'll go ahead and stop the video recording. Video will be posted in 24, 48 hours. Um, yeah, thanks everyone again for joining and uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for Bye bye.